Hey, this is the driveway primitive. I'm not in the driveway, I'm in the basement. I think you've seen me here before and today we're going to be working on my 28 inch snapper riding lawn mower. So, I want to show you the problem first. This is the little pulley. I am not a mechanic. I'm actually terrible at fixing things. But This is a little wheel that causes the whole thing to go forward, to move around. And I had to buy another one. And this is a drive disc with liner. Some of these mowers have a little liner in there and it helps with the braking system from what I've read. So I paid $17.99 plus tax at a little uh, little small ma and pa kind of place. We're going to open this up. I see what this, this liner is probably asbestos or something. That's what they usually use for brake kind of things. This one's just turned black over time. I've had this thing, I don't know, five or six years. And it started uh, this year, it, it wouldn't go up hills. It wouldn't go up inclines. It's been getting worse and worse. And if you look at the outer edge of this old one, you can see how it's disintegrated. It's got a lot of cracks in it, a lot of chips. And the height of it is way less. So I'm going to show you what this does. And then we'll go through, I'll, I'll recreate taking this one off, and we'll put this one on. Okay, as you can see, I've got this thing turned up off on the back. These are the two wheels, back of the mower, underneath. This is where this drive disc would, was on. It was, it was attached right here. And if you can look and see up in here, let me move it a little bit. But up in there, there's another disc. And this is where the pulley is. It's connected to this disc. This one, as it turns it actually operates the momentum of the vehicle it, it makes it go and as that exterior line and wears off it just does not have the force to propel the mower up inclines and eventually it'll just stop moving altogether so that's what we're gonna fix I'm gonna put this old one back on and I'm gonna show you how to take it off now when you go to remove this disc you're going to have this configuration here. This It's going to be attached with four bolts. Ignore this center bolt. You don't have to remove that. But this is what the bolts look like. They're, on mine at least, as it came from the factory, they were boogers to remove. I've gone ahead and taken them off, but what I had to do, I had to get one of these, set it on there, and then I had to get another just open-ended wrench use this end like this and I had to actually pull down like that it was a pain in the butt and because the wheel will roll with you you also need some sort of a calipered kind of wrench that you can put on and press against this bar otherwise it just I think it would have been impossible so you would do that you would take these off Once you get them real loose, and like I said, I've, I've taken, there would be four of them. I've already taken them off for brevity. You'd remove this, and then you can disassemble. You take these off. The first plate just looks like this. It's pretty easy to tell which side's which. This has the these little bumps going upwards. they are indentions on this side. There's also a little piece that's sort of a flexible material. You need to keep that. Don't throw it away. It fits right there. Then you'll put that right back on. You take your old disc out. And again, all that wear and tear. You get your replacement. Your $17 and something. I guess it was about $20 with tax replacement. Put it right back on here. This is your replacement part. And because it's higher, it's not eating down as much, it's going to make better contact with this disc back here. And now, it's a simple procedure. You just put everything back together like it was. And I know this seems extremely easy, but for somebody like me with not a high skill level, I had to do some research. The good news is you're going to save yourself a lot of money doing this yourself, and it's really not that cumbersome. Getting these bolts off was the hardest thing I had to do, and it was a booger. I'm not going to lie, it took me about 30 minutes to just get them 
dislodged or I could turn them but that's the procedure right now and I'll tighten these down and we'll be good to go it really is that simple you want to get them tight hopefully not as tight as the robots at the factory because that was crazy but you want to get them tight so that uh, you can't turn it anymore and then you're, you're good to run the vehicle again. You're good to cut some grass. So you see the procedure. Just go around. I hope this has helped somebody. Um, as simple as this seems, it was kind of difficult for me to, to figure out how to do it. Again, I'm not a garage guy. I'm not a motorhead. I just want people to know that you can do this yourself. There's a lot of things I would never be able to figure out. But this is one of those things. You just watched me do it. If, you're, if your snapper riding lawnmower is not propelling like it should, it's very, very possible. Just look at your, uh, this, turn it up on its back and look at this little disc. And if it's eroded like that, I can almost guarantee you that's the problem. And this is the quick fix. It's, it's the right fix. You will be cutting grass again uh, within, uh, I'll be out there in 10 minutes probably. All right, thanks.